Well, how you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at The Marvels, the latest entry in Phase 5 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was directed by Naya DaCosta and stars Brie Larson, Tayana Paris, and Iman Vellani. Several years after the events of Captain Marvel, Carol fulfills her promise and destroys the Supreme Intelligence. However, this has some unintended consequences as the Kree homeworld of Hala descends into civil war and is all but destroyed. But things are looking up for the Kree as their leader Darben, played by Zawi Ashton, has acquired one of the Quantum Bands. Kamala Khan, aka Ms. Marvel, has the other. Darben uses the Quantum Band to start tearing open wormholes in space to extract resources from other planets in order to revive her own. This not only starts literally tearing apart space-time, but also does some weird things with Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, and Monica, I'm too cool for a codename Rambo. Whenever they use their powers, they start switching places, often with humorous results. So our three heroes have to learn how to deal with that and stop Darben from destroying the universe. Also, there are flirkins. And I'm gonna say this right off the bat. There is a scene in this movie involving several flirkin kittens. Flirt kittens? And that scene is worth the price of admission alone. I'm not going to tell you what happens in that scene. Not going to give you any hints. You're just going to have to trust me. And I'm sure several people in the comments below who have already seen the movie will vouch for what I'm saying. You can stay here and listen to the rest of my comments if you want, but you are free to stop this video and go see the movie right now. Okay, for those of you who are still here, Phase 5 of the MCU has had some ups and downs to say the least. There have been a few bright spots like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Loki Season 2 wasn't half bad. But Phase 5 did start with Quantum Mania, which was fine, but it did have some issues. Not the least of which were the poor visual effects. And I don't know about you, but I am okay just pretending Secret Invasion never happened. But with the Marvels, I feel like the MCU is finally back on track. Deadpool 3, don't let me down. I do have some minor issues with it. There is a bit of a deus ex machina near the end. And also, the Kree are the bad guys again. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of over the Kree as the villains. I'm not sure I was ever actually under the Kree, to be honest. I just never found them particularly interesting. And although I loved Guardians of the Galaxy, Ronan the Accuser was one of the weaker villains in the MCU. I might be okay with more Kree if it also meant more Jimon Hansu, but sadly he's not in this. All that said, I do think this is the best version of the Kree that we've had so far, and I think they did a pretty good job with their story overall. I thought Ashton did a pretty good job as Darben, who is the best type of villain, the hero of her own story. You don't necessarily agree with what she's doing, but you do understand why she's doing it. The Kree are near extinction, and she is trying desperately to save what is left of her barely habitable homeworld, but she's doing this at the cost of countless other lives, and I wouldn't necessarily say she's a sympathetic character, but she's at least in the neighborhood of sympathetic. There is definitely some comic book silliness here, but at least it is the fun kind and not the dumb kind. There's a scene here where the Marvels visit a planet that is populated by people who can only communicate by singing. As soon as you walk into town on this planet, you basically walk into a musical. And they're singing in English, but if you just try speaking to them normally, they won't understand you. How does that make sense? Because comics. We also get a training montage where the Marvels are trying to work with the fact that they keep trading places every time they use their powers and learn how to use that to their advantage. And part of their training involves double dutch. Not kidding. And that seems like a very silly way to train to fight the Kree, but when you consider they're trying to improve their coordination and their teamwork, in a weird way, it actually kind of works. The action sequences are a lot of fun, and they go all over the place because of their newly found teleportation powers. Sometimes they're in space, sometimes they're on Earth, sometimes they're in both places at once. And they get some help from Goose, who is happy to eat any Kree that stand in their way. Though they do not stay inside Goose for long. Apparently, Flurkin have trouble digesting Kree. You know, I have many questions about Flurkin Anatomy. I'm also very happy that after the mess that was Quantumania, the visual effects are much improved here. They look pretty good. I did like how Larson and Paris played off of each other. Carol has, of course, been off-world for many years, and Monica is not terribly happy that she hasn't seen Aunt Carol since she was a small child, and understandably feels a bit neglected as a result. And Carol's trying to mend the relationship, but Monica's not really there yet, and it's a very sad story for both of them. And I do think Larson's performance in the Marvels was a step up from Captain Marvel. Carol came across as a bit cold and unemotional in that movie, and I know that was part of her training as a soldier, that was kind of the point, but several years have passed 
past and the character has had time to grow and Larson is actually allowed to emote now. And it's good to see Carol get to this point. She feels much more like a human being and less like an alien killing machine. Though she is still kind of an alien killing machine. Iman Vellani reprises her role as Kamala Khan and I cannot stress this enough, she must be protected at all costs. I cannot imagine anyone else playing this part. She is damn near perfect. Her constant fangirling over Carol is adorable, and Carol responds to that pretty well and actually ends up bonding with Kamala, which I wasn't really expecting. I thought she would kind of be more like, go away, kid, you bother me. But I'm glad they did not go that route. That would have been a bit cliche. I suppose Monica goes that route to a certain extent because Kamala keeps trying to suggest code names for her and she keeps rejecting them because I don't need a code name, which... Come on, you gotta have a code name. And I believe that's supposed to be a nod to the comic book version of the character, who has in fact had several code names. But Monica eventually warms up to her, and even Nick Fury loves having her around. I mean, how could you not? And it's good to see that Kamala's parents and brother got to come along for the ride. That entire family, they all have such good comedic timing. Great job by the casting department there. And thankfully, it looks like the MCU is not done with Ms. Marvel, as there is a scene in the movie that appears to be setting up the Young Avengers. Overall, while it's certainly not perfect, it is a lot of fun and has a lot of heart, and the three leads play off each other very well. Also, Flurkin Kittens. Go see the movie for the Flurkin Kittens. Also for the heroes, but mostly the kittens. And yes, there is a mid credit scene with a very unexpected cameo, and that is all I will say. And there is no post credit scene, but there is a little something at the end of the credits. It's kind of along the lines of what they did with Halloween 2018, although a bit sillier. And that's all I have to say about the Marvels. Till next time, take care.